Let it rest upon me as I present your word to your people. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles and turn to Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. And this is picking up the story where Noah is being first mentioned. He will be Noah as Noah on the ark. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, this is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. And Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and full of violence, and God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. I wonder if God is having a look at the earth today. I want to draw your attention to verse 10. Noah had three sons. This means that after the ark came to rest at the end of the flood, Noah and his wife came off of the ark, as did the three boys and their wives, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the Japhethites, they head all over the world. The Hamites head south. They head to Egypt and Africa, while the Japhethites head in the exact opposite direction. But then there's another group, the sons of Shem, thank you, that stay in the Levant and in that general area and they become the sons of Shem. Now you're very familiar with them, even though you don't know it. We call them Jews today. We call them Israel. And as a matter of fact, even in our English language, we recognize they're the sons of Shem because we call them Semitic people. And the Nazis who hated them we called anti-Semites. Or maybe I should say it in Hebrew. Shemitic and anti-Shemite. And Shem has a strange name. You ever met anybody that had a dog or a cat just called dog or cat? I have. Well... Shem's name means name. What's your name? Name. What? My name is Shem. Shem means name. I'm name. And down through the centuries, this group of people who are people of the name are going to distinguish themselves as being different from everybody else. Even today, if a Jewish person is writing you a letter, they will never write the word God. Even if they want to say, God bless you. They might put down G space D, but they will never put the O in the middle and complete the word. Why? Because they feel it's disrespectful to God. However, what they will say is Hashem, the name. May Hashem bless you. Baruch Atah Hashem. And the idea there is, may you be blessed in the name. And today, we're going to just look a little bit at one of the most important names in the Bible. Turn, if you will, to Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. Exodus 
Exodus 17, verse 8. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses, and Josh, Moses said to Joshua, Come, or choose some of our men and go and fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on the hilltop with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses ordered, and Moses and Aaron and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses, Aaron, pardon me, as long as Moses held his hands, held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. So you have this beautiful picture, if you will, of a man standing on top of the mountain like this, and as long as his hands are up, they're winning. When his hands go down, they start to lose. And two men either side of him. It's a beautiful picture of the cross of Christ. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, and Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other side, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. And here we begin to see a young man who starts to distinguish himself from everybody else. His name is Joshua. And Joshua begins to set himself apart as being a great warrior. A tremendous man of God, actually. This is the first time that we really see him step out as being an assistant to Moses. Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. But he couldn't do the whole thing alone. And God appointed to him Joshua. And then the Lord said to Moses, write on a scroll something to, uh, something to be remembered and make sure Joshua hears it. His name is a very unique name. In Hebrew, it's not actually pronounced Joshua, but Yeshua. In Numbers chapter 14, the Bible says, all that night, the people of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. Now, here's what's happening. In Numbers chapter 14, Moses has sent the spies into the promised land. And he's asked them to have a look and see if it is exactly as God said it would be. And they came back and they said, it is exactly as God said it would be. But let me tell you, there are giants in that land. And they meant giants. Nephilim. There are giants in that land, and we look like grasshoppers in their eyes. And so they spread this report through the people, and the people began to fall apart and to weep. They'd been out in this desert for such a long time now, and this was just such a horrible thing. And all the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in the desert, why? Is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. By the way, not one of them was ever permitted to go back. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite community gathered there. Joshua, the son of Nun. That's actually noon if you want the proper pronunciation. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephthah, who were among those that explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we pass through is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he'll let us lead us into the, that land, land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only don't rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because he will swallow them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Verse 20. Then the Lord replied, I have forgiven them. Moses has a chat with the Lord. The Lord said, I'll kill them all. And then God, Moses goes in and has a talk with the Lord. And the Lord says, all right, I have forgiven them all. Nevertheless, as surely as I live and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the earth, not one of them, those men that saw my glory and my miraculous signs that I performed in Egypt and in the desert who disobeyed me and tested me 10 times, not one of them will ever see the land I promised them on oath. No, uh, uh, to their forefathers. No, 
one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land and his descendants. Since the Amalekites and the Canaanites living in the valleys turn back tomorrow uh, uh, and set out toward the desert along the route to the Red Sea. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, how long will the wicked community grumble against me? I have heard their complaints and seen, their grumbling, seen the grumbling of the Israelites. So tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very things you say. Wouldn't that be terrible if God gave you what you expected? God said, I'll do the very thing you accuse me of. You said I brought you out here to die? Okay. I'm going to do that very thing. Be it unto you according to your faith. In the desert, your body will fall, every one of you, 20 years old or more, who is counted in the census and was grumbled against me. Not one of you will enter the land. I swore with upturned hand to make your home, except for Caleb, the son of Jephthah, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Joshua set himself apart as a man with a different spirit. Along with Caleb. Caleb, incidentally, means dog. I always think of dog the bounty hunter. And Joshua, he has a very unique name and he's a unique man and he will rise to become the grand leader of Israel. Moses will complete his task and Moses will die and the one that will take over for him will be Joshua. He will distinguish himself as being different from all the others. Twelve went out. Ten came back complaining. Only two said, we can do it. If God is on our side, we can do it. Amen. In Numbers 27, verse 16, May the Lord, the God of the spirits of all mankind, appoint a man over this community to go out and come in before them, one that will lead them out and bring them in. So the Lord's people may not, may not be like sheep without a shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua, a man in whom is my spirit or the spirit, and lay your hand upon him. Have him stand before the priest Eliezer and the entire assembly and commission him in the presence, in their presence, Give him some of your authority so that the whole Israelite community will obey him. So what's going to happen here is God is going to take Moses out of the picture and Moses knows it. And God speaks to Moses and said, listen, you need a successor. And God didn't choose Caleb. He chose Joshua. Joshua was to be the successor. He was a man of faith. He was a warrior. He was a strong leader. And God would give him some great instructions. And Moses did as the Lord commanded, verse 22. And he took Joshua and had him stand before Eliezer the priest and the whole community. And he laid his hands on him and he commissioned him as the Lord had instructed. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 1, we begin to hear something of that commissioning. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I'm about to give them or give to the Israelites. They're talking now about going in across the Jordan River and going in to take Jericho, the most fortified city of its time. One of the most ancient cities of its time. Your territory will extend from the desert in Lebanon and from the great river Euphrates and all the Hittite country and to the great sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Let me tell you, that's repeated in the New Testament. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous. 
Incidentally, don't think that he was weak and wimpy. God was just telling him, this is what I expect from you. This is what I want from you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land. I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn to the right or the left so that you may be successful in whatever you do. Do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. And then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Amen. Be strong and courageous. Yes. Do not be terrified and do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You Listen, maybe that's for you today. Amen. Be strong and courageous. Yes. Amen. The Lord will never leave you Amen. and never forsake you. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go throughout the camp and tell the people, get your supplies ready and so on. Well, we come now to the New Testament, to a story you know so well. I wonder how often every single one of you have heard what I'm about to read to you now. It's some of the most common scripture. It's found in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. And it says this. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, he didn't want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. Incidentally, under the Jewish law of the time, he could have had her stoned to death for adultery. But he loved her, and he did not want that for her, so he was willing to walk away from this engagement. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Joshua. He said, well, hold it, his name is Jesus. That is the Greek version of the Hebrew name Yeshua. That's how important this name is. That's how magnificent is the name Joshua. Listen to what he's going to say. This is an angel speaking, bringing a message from God. The father always named the child. And so Jesus was named by his father in heaven. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus or Yeshua. Because he will save his people from their sins. You see, Joshua or Yeshua, translated to English is Jehovah saves. Jehovah saves. That's what the name actually means. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did. The angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Yeshua. The one that would lead Israel finally into the promised land was Yeshua. And God would take that name, Jehovah Saves, and he would have that stored and given to his own son, Jesus. Now we call him Jesus. If you're Spanish, you call him Jesus. And there are other cultures that call him Yesu. There are many different pronunciations of the name, but the truth is, the actual name is Yeshua. So to delineate between the Joshua of the Old Testament, including the book of Joshua, and Jesus of the New Testament in English, we call one by its closer 
Hebrew name, Joshua, and in English, Jesus. But it's exactly the same name. And after Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven. John 17, Father, a time has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all the people that he might have eternal life, that he might give eternal life to those you've given him. Now, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God and Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have bought you glory on the earth by completing the work you gave me to do. By the way, don't ever believe those people that will tell you that Jesus didn't finish his work. He most certainly finished the work he says so. Amen. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They're yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now, they know that everything you have given me comes from you for I gave them the words that you gave me and they accepted them they knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me I pray for them I'm not praying for the world but for those you've given me for they're yours all I have is yours and all you have is mine and the glory has come through me or to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer. He's about to die. This is the night before he goes to trial. But they're still in the world. I'm coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name. The name you gave me. You see, Joshua was a mighty warrior. He was a mighty man of faith. He was a mighty man of strength. He was strong and he was courageous and he was a great leader. There is much history to this name. And Jesus said, protect them by the name you gave me. One of the great things we know as Christians is when we pray, we come to the Father through Jesus. Father, I come in the name of Jesus. And the Lord himself said, Whatsoever things you ask in my name, my Shem. If any of you have encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion then make my joy complete by being like-minded having the same love being one in spirit and in purpose do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit but in humility consider one another as better than yourselves each should not only look to his own interest but to the interests of others your attitude should be the same as that as Yeshua who being in the very nature of God didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped but made of himself nothing Taking the very nature of a servant. Imagine coming down from heaven to become human. Being made in human likeness. We call that the kenosis. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him and gave him a Shem, gave him a name that is above every other Shem, every other name, Amen. that at the name of Yeshua, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Now that's a name. That's a name. That's a title. There is no other name to equal the name of Jesus. Out of respect, in our Western culture, most people don't name their children Jesus. It is not so in the Latin cultures. It's very common to be called Jesus. But in our culture, we don't name our children Yeshua or Jesus. We call them Joshua. 
It is a respectful nod to Jesus himself. And today, we're going to dedicate a little baby. I bet you can't guess what his name is. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, as we have studied your word, bring it to life in the lives of these people. Let them be encouraged and strengthened as they serve you. In Jesus' name, amen.